Blessed is our God, always now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship God our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself our King and our God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great, thou art clothed with honour and majesty, who coverest thyself with light as with a garment, who hast stretched out the heavens like a tent, who hast laid the beams of thy chambers in the waters, who makest the clouds thy chariot, who ridest on the wings of the wind, who makest thy angel spirits and thy ministers a fiery flame, thou didst set the earth on its foundation, so that it should never be shaken, thou didst cover it with the deep as with a garment, the waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled, at the sound of thy thunder they took to flight, the mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place where thou hast, which thou didst establish for them. Thou didst set a bound which they should not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. Thou makest springs gush forth in the valleys, they flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field, the wild asses quench their thirst. By them the birds of the air have their habitation, they sing among the branches. From thy lofty abode thou waterest the mountains, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy work. Thou dost cause the grass to grow for the cattle, fodder for the animals that serve man that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, to make oil to make his face shine and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted. In them the birds build their nest, the stork has her home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats, the rocks are a refuge for the badgers. Thou hast made the moon to mark the seasons, the sun knows its time for setting. Thou makest darkness and it is night when all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they get them away and lie down in their dens. Man goes forth to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works in wisdom, hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, which teems with things innumerable, small living things, both, both small and great. There go the ships and leviathan, which thou hast formed to sport in it. These are looked to thee to give them their food in due season. When thou givest to them, they gather it up. When thou openest thy hands, they are filled with good things. When thou hidest thy face, they are dismayed. When thou takest away their spirit, they die and return to their dust. When thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and makes it tremble, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord of my soul. The sun knows its time for setting, thou makest darkness and it is night. O Lord, how manifold are thy works in wisdom, hast thou made them all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. From above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our metropolitan deacon, for our archbishop in and for the honorable presbyter of the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, for this land and all those in seats of authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most 
most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, o Lord. For unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Behold, he raises all. Be 
because of him do I perish. Glory to thy cross and resurrection, O Lord. For his mercy is confirmed on us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Good day, hell cries out groaning. My power has been trampled down. The shepherd is crucified and Adam is raised. I have been deprived of those whom I ruled. Those whom I swallowed in my strength I have given up. He who was crucified has emptied the tombs. The power of death has been vanquished. Glory to thy cross and resurrection, O Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The great Moses mystically foreshadowed this day when he said, God bless the seventh day. This is the blessed Sabbath. This is the day of rest, on which the only begotten Son of God rested from all his works, by suffering death to fulfill the plan of salvation. He kept the Sabbath in the flesh, by returning again to what he was, he has granted us eternal life through his resurrection. For he alone is good and the love of man. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. Let us praise the Virgin of heaven, the glory of the world, the song of the angels, the beauty of the faithful. She was born of man, yet gave birth to God. She was revealed as the heaven, as the temple of the Godhead. She destroyed the wall of enmity. She commenced a peace, she opened her kingdom. Since she is our foundation of faith, our defender is the Lord whom she bore. Courage, courage, O people of God, for Christ will destroy our enemies. Since he is all power, Wisdom, stand upright. Gladsome light of the holy glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed, O Jesus Christ, now that we have come to the setting Son, and behold the light of evening. We praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To meet it is at all times to worship thee with voices of praise. O Son of God and Giver of life, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and there was evening and there was morning a second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit, be fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind, upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kind, and trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. Wisdom. The reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us sit down. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes about and see, they all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried in the arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you, the rams of Nabaoth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify my glorious house. Who are these that fly like a cloud and like doves to their windows? For the coastlands shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your sons from far, their silver and gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I smote you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Your gates shall be open continually, day and night they shall not be shut, that men may bring to you the wealth of the nations, with their kings led in procession. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish, those nations shall be utterly laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons of those who oppressed you shall come bending low to you, and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet, and they shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, with no one passing through, I will make you majestic forever, a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of nations, you shall suck the breast of kings, and you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Saviour and your Redeemer, the mighty one of Israel. Wisdom. The reading from Exodus. Let us attend. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month they shall take every man a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for the household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then a man and his neighbor next to his house shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goat, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs in the evening. Then shall they take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat them. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw, boiled with water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, your loins girded, and your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Pascha. Wisdom. 
The reading from the prophecy of Jonah. Let us attend. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God, and they threw the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship, and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call upon your God. Perhaps God will save us, that we do not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation, and whence do you come? What is your country, and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid, and said to him, What is this you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may quiet down for us? The sea grew more and more tempestuous. And he said to them, Take me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried to the Lord, We beseech thee, O Lord, let not us perish for this man's life, and lay us not on us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great whale to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the whale three nights and three days. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the whale, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and thou didst hear my voice. For thou didst cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood was round about me, all thy waves and thy billows passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy presence. How shall I again look upon my holy temple? The waters closed in over me, the deep was round about me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet thou didst bring up my life from the pit, O Lord my God, when my soul fainted within me. I remember the Lord, and my prayer came to me into thy holy temple. Those who pay regard to thee, I will forsake their true loyalty. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to thee. What have I vowed I will pay? Thy deliverance belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the whale, and it cast out Jonah upon dry land. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he cried, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Then tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he made proclamation and published through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them cry mightily to God, yea, let everyone turn from his evil way, and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows, God may yet repent, and turn from his fierce anger, so that we perish not. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was troubled. And he prayed to the Lord and said, I pray thee, Lord, is it not is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? This is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repentest of evil. 
Therefore now, O Lord, take my life from me, I beseech you, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade till he should see what would come of the city. And the Lord God appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm which attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a sultry east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than a thousand hundred and twenty thousand persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle? Wisdom. The reading from Joshua. Let us attend. <clears throat> While the people of Israel were encamped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month at evening in the plains of Jericho. And on the morrow after the Passover, on that very day, they ate of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. And the manna ceased on the morrow when they ate of the produce of the land, and the people of Israel had manna no more, but ate of the fruit of the land of the Phoenicians that year. When Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us or for your, our adversaries? And he said, No, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord bid his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Put off your shoes from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Wisdom, the reading from Exodus, let us attend. And they moved on from Succoth and encamped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart before the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of Piharoth, between Migdal and the sea, in front of Beelzephon, that you shall encamp over against it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the people of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed towards the people. And they said, What is this we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariots, and took his army with him, and took six hundred picked chariots, and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel as they went forth defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, and all his horsemen and his army, and overtook them in a camp at the sea by Piharoth in front of Beelzephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they were in great fear. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves in Egypt that thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness? What hast thou done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to thee in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. 
For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You have only to be still. The Lord said to Moses, Why dost thou cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up thy rod, stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go on dry ground to the sea. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who went before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and the night passed without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to, the, to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down upon the host of the Egyptians, and discomfited the host of the Egyptians, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its wonted flow when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled into it, and the Lord routed the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not so much as one of them remained, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore, and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord, and spoke, saying, let us sing to the Lord. Lord, gloriously has he been glorified. The horse and his rider he is thrown into the sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord, gloriously has he been Helper and a protector for salvation, let us sing unto the Lord. This is my God, and I will glorify him, the God of my Father, and I will exalt him. Let us sing unto the Lord. The Lord bring the wars to naught, the Lord it is in his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he has cast into the sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord gloriously has he been glorified. And his chosen officers are sunk in the Red Sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord gloriously has he been glorified. The floods cover them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord Hand, O Lord, has 
hast shattered the enemy, and in the greatness of thy majesty thou hast overthrown thine adversaries. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord gloriously has he been glorified. Thou sendest forth thy fury, it consumes them like stubble, and by the spirit of thy displeasure the water parted asunder. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord gloriously has he been glorified. The waters stood up like a wall, the deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord gloriously has he been glorified. The enemy said, I will pursue and I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. I will satisfy my soul. I will destroy with my sword, my hand shall have dominion. Let us sing unto the Lord. Oh, glorious me, as he been glorified. Thou didst send thy spirit, and the sea covered them. They sank as lead into the mighty waters. Let us sing unto the Lord. Oh, glorious me, as he been like thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorified in holiness, marvellous in glory, doing wonders. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord glorious me, as he been glorified. Thou didst stretch out thy right hand, and the earth swallowed them. Thou hast led in thy righteousness the people, now hast redeemed. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord glorious me, has he been glorified. Now are the chiefs of Edom dismayed, the leaders of Moab, trembling seizes them. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord glorious me, has he been glorified. Let trembling and fear fall upon them because of the greatness of thine arm. Let them become a stone. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord glorious me, as he been glorified. Unto thy people pass by, O Lord, unto the people pass by whom thou hast purchased. Let us sing to the Lord. Lord glorious me, as he been glorified. Land them on thy mount in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thine abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, in which thy hands have made ready. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord glorious me, has he been glorified. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For when the horse of the Pharaoh with the chariots and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought brought back the water of the sea upon them. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord glorious me, has he been glorified. But the children of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Let us sing to the Lord. Lord glorious me, has he been glorified. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit, let us sing unto the Lord. Lord glorious me, has he been glorified. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord glorious me, has he been glorified. Wisdom. The reading from the prophecy of Zephaniah. Let us return. Thus says the Lord, wait for me for the day when I rise as a witness. So my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out upon them my indignation, all the heat of my anger. For in the fire of my jealous wrath all the earth shall be consumed. Yea, at that, at that time I will change the speech of the peoples to a pure speech, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. On that day you shall not be put to shame because of the deeds by which you have rebelled against me. For then I will remove you from your midst, remove from your midst your proudly exultant ones, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. For I will leave in the midst of you a people humbled and lowly, 
They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord, those who are left in Israel. They shall do no wrong and utter no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouth a deceitful tongue, for they shall pasture and lie down, and none shall make, uh, make them afraid. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, o, o Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you, he has cast out your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall see evil no more. Wisdom. The reading from the third book of Kings. Letter to Fan. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow was there with gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a cruse. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterward make for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal shall not be spent, and the cruse of oil shall not fail, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not spent, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill, and his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And she took him from her bosom and carried him up unto the, into the upper chamber where he lodged and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord, my God, hast thou brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord, my God, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is true. Wisdom. The reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us attend. My soul shall rejoice in the Lord, for he has clothed me with a garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoot, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. For Zion, for Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as the young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bride rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Wisdom. The reading from Genesis. Let us attend. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place 
of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the places afar off. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the ass. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Then Abraham put forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the lad and, or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord has seen, as it is said to this day, On the mount the Lord was seen. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth bless themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Wisdom. The reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us attend. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Aliens shall stand and feed your flocks, foreigners shall be your plowmen and vine dressers, but you shall be called the priests of the Lord, men shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. You shall eat the wealth of the nations, in, and in, the riches you, in their riches you shall glory. Instead of your shame you shall have a double portion. Instead of dishonor, you shall rejoice in your lot. Therefore, in your land, you shall possess a double portion. Yours shall be everlasting joy. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, and they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. And they shall greatly rejoice in the Lord. Wisdom. The reading from the fourth book of Kings. Let us attend. One day Elisha went down to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God, who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small roof chamber with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there, and he turned into the chamber and rested there, and he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call the Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said to him, Say now to her, Seeing you have taken all this trouble for us, what is to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, 
Well, she has no son and her husband is old. He said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway and he said, at this season, when the time comes round, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my lord, a man of God did not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and she bore a son about that time the following spring, as Elisha had said to her. When the child had grown, he went out one day to his father among the reapers. And he said to his father, oh, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, carry him to his mother. And when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap till noon and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, send me one of the servants and one of the asses that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, it will be well. And she saddled the ass and said to her servant, Urge the beast on, do not slacken the pace for me, unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi his servant, Look, yonder is the Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the mountain to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet, and Gehazi came to thrust her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for she is in bitter distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? He said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, do not salute him. And if anyone salutes you, do not reply, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. Therefore he returned to meet him and told him, The child has not awaked. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and shut the door upon the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and lay upon his back, putting his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. And as he stretched himself upon him, the flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up again and walked once to and fro in the house and went up and stretched himself upon him. The child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her, and when she came to him, he said, Take up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she took up her son and went home. Wisdom. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us sit down. Thus says the Lord, Where is he who brought up out of the sea the shepherd of his sheep? Where is he who put in the midst of them his Holy Spirit, who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses? who divided the water before them to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths, like a horse in the desert they did not stumble, like cattle that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So thou didst lead thy people to make for thyself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see from thy holy and glorious habitation. Where are thy zeal and thy might? The yearning of thy heart and thy compassion are withheld from me. For thou art our father, Though Abraham does not know us, and Israel does not acknowledge us, Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer, from of old is thy name. O Lord, why dost thou make us err from thy ways, and harden our hearts, so that we fear thee not? Return for the sake of thy servants, the tribes of thy heritage, thy holy people possess thy sanctuary a little while. Our adversaries have trodden it down. We have become like those over whom thou hast never ruled, like those who are not called by thy name. O oh, that thou wouldst rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at thy presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire what causes water to boil, to make thy name known to thy adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at thy presence. When thou didst ter when did thou didst terrible things which we looked for not, thou camest down the mountains quaked at thy presence. From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eyes have seen has seen a God beside thee who works for those who wait for him. Thou meetest him joyfully. Thou meetest him that joyfully works righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. Wisdom. 
The reading from the prophecy of Jeremiah. Let us attend. Thus says the Lord, Behold the days of when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Wisdom, the reading from the prophecy of Daniel, let us attend. In his eighteenth year, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, whose height was sixty cubits and its breadth six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Jur in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to assemble the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trident, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the people heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trident, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music. All the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore at that time certain Chaldeans came forward and mal maliciously accused the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews who now is appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no heed to thee, they do not serve thy gods or worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. When they brought these men before the king, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you are ready when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image which I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is in the heavens, able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known to thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods or worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace, heated seven times more than it was wont to be heated, and he ordered certain mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their mantles, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast into the burning, fiery furnace. 
because the king's order was strict and the furnace very hot. The flame of the fire slew those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. And they walked about in the midst of the flame, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. Then Azariah stood and offered this prayer in the midst of the fire. He opened his mouth and sang, Blessed art thou, o Lord, the God of our fathers, and worthy of praise, and thy name is glorified forever. For thou art just in all that thou hast done to us, and all thy works are true, and thy ways are right, and all thy judgments are true. Thou hast executed true judgments in all that thou hast brought upon us and upon Jerusalem, the holy city of our fathers, for in truth and justice thou hast brought all this upon us because of our sins. For we have sinfully and lawlessly departed from thee, and have sinned in all things, and have not obeyed thy commandments. We have not observed them or done them, as thou hast commanded us that it might go well with us. So all that thou hast brought upon us, and all that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. Thou hast given us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful rebels, and to an unjust king, the most wicked in all the world. And now we cannot open our mouths. Shame and disgrace have befallen thy servants and worshippers. For thy name's sake, do not give us up utterly, and do not break thy covenant, and do not withdraw thy mercy from us for the sake of Abraham thy beloved, and for the sake of Isaac thy servant, and Israel thy holy one to whom thou didst promise to make their descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as the sand on the shore of the sea. For we, O Lord, have become fewer than any nation and are brought low this day in all the world because of our sins. And at this time there is no prince or prophet or leader, no burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incense, no place to make an offering before thee or to find mercy. Yet with a contrite heart and a humble spirit may we be accepted as though it were with burnt offerings of rams and bulls and with tens of thousands of fat lambs. Such may our sacrifice be in thy sight this day and may we wholly follow thee for there will be no shame for those who trust in thee. And now with all our heart we follow thee and we fear thee and seek thy face. Do not put us to shame but deal with us in thy forbearance and thine abundant mercy. Deliver us in accordance with thy marvellous works, and give glory to thy name, O Lord. Let all who do harm to thy servants be put to shame. Let them be disgraced and deprived of all power and dominion, and let their strength be broken. Let them know that thou art the Lord, the only God, glorious over all the world. Now the king's servants who threw them in did not cease heating the furnace fire with naphtha, pitch, tow, and brass. And the flame streamed out above the furnace forty-nine cubits, and it broke through and burned those of the Chaldeans whom it caught about in the furnace. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions, and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace, and made the midst of the furnace like a moist, whistling wind, so that the fire did not touch them at all, or hurt or trouble them. Then the three, as with one mouth, praised and glorified and blessed God in the furnace, saying, Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and highly exalted forever. And blessed is thy glorious holy name, to be highly praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holy glory, to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Blessed art thou who sittest upon the cherubim and lookest upon the deep, to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou upon the throne of thy kingdom, to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, to be sung and glorified forever. Of 
souls of the right the Lord, you who are holy and humble in heart. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, Ananias, Azariah, and Ishiah. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, apostles, prophets, and martyrs of the Lord. Son and the Holy Spirit, the Lord. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. We praise, bless, and worship the Lord, singing and exalting him above all. divine counsel 
In the midst of the gods he holds judgment. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to thee belong the nations. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the faces of sinners? Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to thee belong the nations. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless, maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to thee belong the nations. Rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the sinner. They have neither knowledge nor understanding, they walk about in darkness. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to thee belong all the nations. Let all the foundations of the earth be shaken. I say you are God's sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like men and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to thee belong all the nations. Arise, O God, judge the Stand upright, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. And to thy spirit. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to thee, o Lord. Glory to thee. Let us attend. At the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came and the other Mary to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him the keepers did shake, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said to the women, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee, and there shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, 
Say that his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Let us say with all soul and with all who mind, let us say. God of our fathers, we pray thee, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great goodness, we pray thee, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our metropolitan deacon, for our Archbishop Irene. And for all our brethren in Christ. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, for this land and all those in seats of authority. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy house, for all of our fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, the Orthodox departed before us, especially the newly departed Christine, the departed Cassian, Anna, Larissa, Constantine, Priest John, Priest Alexander, Maria, Douglas, Alan, Giselle, who here and in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, Lisa, Richard, Antonina, Eleftheria, Hania, Kate, Nathan, Finn, Duncan, Brian, Jean, Janice, Ron, Wendy, Anastas, Olivia, Gelly, Frank, Eva, George, Katian, Rebecca, Andreas, Reagan, Frank, Connie, Pete, Christine, Stephanie, James, Jessica, Tatiana, Christina, Yaroslav, Anna, Alexander, Anton, Boris, Nancy, Ron, Susanna, Michael, Nicholas, Lisa, Christina, Nathaniel, Owen, Jeremy, Michael, Peter, Susan, Denise, Patricia, Peter, Stilianos, Rosie, Sam, Holly, and Linda, for all the members of this holy mission and all those who have asked us to pray for them and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray that you didn't not abhor the virgin's womb, look with mercy upon the handmaidens, Claudia, Cindy, and Susan. Bless the fruit of their wombs, let their infants grow healthy and well-formed in body and intelligent in soul, that they may come to true knowledge of thee, and grant unto thy handmaidens in due course safe and easy delivery. We fervently entreat thee, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For thou art a merciful and man befriending God, and to thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.
Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this evening without sin. Blessed art thou, Lord, the God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is thy name unto the ages. Amen. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us as we have set our hope on thee. Blessed art thou, Lord, to teach me thy statutes. Blessed art thou, Master, make me to understand thy commandments. Blessed art thou, Holy One, enlighten me with thy precepts. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever, despise not the works of thy hands. Unto thee belongeth worship, unto thee belongeth praise, unto thee belongeth glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us complete our evening prayer to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole evening may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. Grant it, o Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Grant it, o Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. Grant it, o Lord. All things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. Grant it, o Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Grant it, o Lord. A Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Grant it, o Lord. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Amen. Amen. Without a good and man befriending God, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be unto all. And to thy spirit. Let us bow our heads unto the Lord. To thee, o Lord. Lord our God, who didst bow the heavens and come down for the salvation of man, look upon thy servants and thine inheritance. But to thee, the fearfully yet man-befriending judge of thy servants, bowed their heads and submissively inclined their necks, awaiting not help from men, but entreating thy mercy and looking confidently for thy salvation. Guard them at all times, both during this present evening and in the approaching night, from every foe, from all adverse powers of the devil, from vain thoughts and from evil memories. Blessed and glorified be the might of thy kingdom, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. We have been freed from sufferings by thy suffering, O Christ. We have been delivered from corruption by thy resurrection. Oh, Lord. Christ. 
According to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of our people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. To glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The most holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord, blot with our sins, Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. When thou didst descend to death, O life immortal, thou didst lay hell with the splendor of thy Godhead. And when from the depths thou didst raise the dead, all the powers of heaven cried out, O giver of life, Christ our God. be he who is Christ our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Preserve, O God, the holy Orthodox faith and Orthodox Christians unto ages of ages. Most holy Theotokos, save our honorable and the cherubim and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. With that corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word, truth may our focus we magnify thee. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our hope, glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Father. Rose from the dead, Christ, our true God, through the prayers of his most pure mother, of the holy, glorious, and all laudable apostles, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for he is good and the friend of man. 